Well, today's the day. Chris called me up and said uh, we're gonna dive on the Aurora and we got a treat, two treats, working with some new scuba gear and uh, well, let's get to it. So, it's great weather out here. Beautiful day for a little dive, a little dip in the water. Beautiful delta. Uh, might be a little murky, you know, it's not the, the Caribbean, but it'll still be fun. We're gonna check out the props today, uh, the rudder, the hull, you know, see what it looks like. Uh, so I'm out here with Dave Foster and he's about to dive down and check out the props and the rudders on the Aurora and maybe some of the bottom, uh, check out the condition. And he's gonna take down the GoPro and he's gonna take down our super bright flashlight that you know, was it waterproof? I don't I don't know if it's waterproof, but we're gonna find out if it if it works, it's waterproof, I guess. I'm kind of here for safety. You know, if something goes wrong, then I get to dive in in uh, you know 45 minutes or so and make sure that he's not you know tangled up on some fishing line or something. Thank you, Smako Sports, for sponsoring this video. We're back on pool work again today. We got it cleaned out. Now it's time to do some grinding and make it look pretty. Welcome to the bottom of the pool. So as you can see, they welded mesh on here to put on some concrete or something so they can stick the tiles to it. And we're gonna put in a membrane so we have to get rid of all this. And we opted for the larger grinder and we'll make it a whole lot faster. As you can see, I do not have a guard on here, and that is purposeful. I just have to be aware of it and pay attention. But it allows me to get a much flatter cut on each one of these, as opposed to having to do something like this. So I'm not taking away any of the original material, just the stuff we don't want. Now I got a job to do. Getting all my tools for taping and painting for getting some gray paint on the trim over here. I've already spray or rolled this out with white, and now from here down, I'm gonna go with some gray, and it's gonna look really good. I'm trying to get this line as straight and consistent as possible along the whole way so that it looks good and straight. Chris and I had to make this little guide because as I was taping this off, I quickly realized in short order that the weld line that I was going off of was very inconsistent and it was gonna look really bad. So I had to start over, but I'm using this just to measure it and get my tape line a little straighter. So the overall job doesn't look totally not put together well. And we'll see how it goes. See how it looks when I'm done and see if it looks straight enough. Otherwise there'll be a, a plan B, I guess. Well, today my assignment is getting up the uh, old teak deck from right next to the swimming pool. That's been there, we never did get to it. So got to get it up and uh, need some tools. So uh, unfortunately, we're not quite totally organized in the uh, tool department. Uh, they're kind of just put wherever after we use them. 
but uh, I need a pry bar or a crowbar. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be mining for gold today, so I don't need that. Um, anyways, it's gonna be good. A good hot day again. Um, there it is. So I think I'm gonna start with this. Uh, and it's it's closer up there, so I'm not I'm not gonna walk around. Just uh, so here we go. Uh, we'll find out find out more about the uh, the condition of the deck when we get there. There's some of our handrails right there, waiting to be restored. This is the old teakwood deck, and we've done quite a bit of the ship, but we're gonna get to the last parts of it. And we wanna do this especially because we're working on the front of the ship, the bow, and right next to the old swimming pool. Um, some of this is gonna come up easy, but like you see right there, some of it's just gonna come up because it's so old and decrepit. And uh, some of this stuff like this, we're gonna set aside. That's a what I call an artifact. It was on the ship for a long time. Don't know if it's original, but uh, we're gonna save it for something. I don't know what's in here. Maybe I should put my gloves on. Okay. It looks like some kind of a vent, more cobwebs. I'll leave that sealed up for now. And then I think I should, oh crap. <laughs> Let me get my gloves on real quick, safety first. Uh, but like you see that one, uh, we may have to drill out some of these plugs for the bolts. And then um, obviously we will have to Wow, that came out easy. Look at that. Um, we will have to, like these bolts right here, you see, again, we're gonna have to cut those off with a, a, a cutting wheel, grinding wheel, grind them down, have uh, Grid or Chris uh, weld some patches on there and so it doesn't leak, and then get off all the rust and then paint it. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, this looks like a heating duct uh, and a lot more cobwebs or ventilation of some sort, but that'll have to be repaired or Chris will decide what to do with that. So that's my project for the day. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some chiseling, some drilling, some scraping, grinding, whatever it takes to get this deck back in shape and uh, you know, get it down to the bare metal so we can paint it. So we'll check in later. Okay, my first job for today is moving this line back and out of the way. And then I'm gonna be prepping and painting this railing. I don't look too overweight, but I'm out of shape. So thank you, Chris. Yep, that's going to be a lot of work, so... Likely, once we air chisel this off, we may have to replace... We may have to replace all this plate that's underneath this, so that we can uh, maybe even widen it out a little bit if we're going to make this back into a swimming pool, so that people have a place to sit. But for the time being, I'm going to work on taking all of this stuff off and putting it into the garbage pile to, so that we can remove it uh, one of these next weekends. Look at that. That's what we're trying to eliminate on this boat. Thick rust like that.
I've cut off one of the rings from the light down below. Obviously, they had to be watertight because they have electricity and light bulbs on the other side. We cannot reuse this or any of them. So we're going to have to sit down and figure out what we're going to do. Do we have a shop fabricate this? Do we find something that will work? We're going to sort that out and we'll bring you up to date when we get it figured out. Coming along, I got about 80%, 95% of this stuff, and uh, it's just a dirty job. Uh, most of it's coming up pretty easily, um, but I still got more to do right here. And I got this little piece here. It's wedged underneath. This thing is bolted down, so yeah, I'm gonna have to get a, some kind of a socket or something on that, to maybe take out that bolt and uh, get this one up. For some reason, this wood seems to have stayed more preserved and not as rotten as the others, but you know, who knows why. Here I am rolling the little trim right here at the bottom and the longest part so far has been taping it off and getting it straight and correct. So this is the easy part. I am sweating it's hot out here and every surface on here is like stove top hot. So um, it's not very easy, but I'm getting it done and hopefully the end product and it'll look decent enough. Now the edges here on the tape, I just have to keep pressing them down. I don't know if the sun's making them pop up because of the heat or what, but I just want to make sure it's not going to bleed. This is a big chunk of metal that's just in our way. Uh, I think it used to hold a bent fan. Um, so I'm gonna, I think, cut this off here and then uh, probably take it piece by piece because I don't think I can get under here to cut it from the bottom. So it's gonna be a little bit of work to figure out what I can take out in the, the biggest pieces without doing too much work. It's a little bit of work.
So this is the drain for the pool. We've done a little grinding, but I think I want to wash these walls off, but I don't want to fill up with water. So I'm going to go find where that drain goes and make sure that it's open so I don't drown. It is a pool, you know. It is heavy. Uh, maybe we should just roll it over to the trash pile. I had to come down to the women's quarters because I was looking for the drain to the pool. I wanted to make sure it was open so when we hose it all out, it wouldn't just backfill. And I found the drain and this handle closes off the drain or opens it up to go out the side. That's it. But one of the things I do is whenever I come into a cabin, I look all over. I am looking for artifacts left behind by previous tenants. And today I happen to find one. Yeah. So I found this journal right up here, tucked in that hole. And yeah, I put my fingers behind things and over the top of things just to make sure there's nothing there. And as I said, this is the uh, women's quarters from when the ship was called the Faithful. And a religious organization had utilized this as their place of residence. But what I find first here, return to place and roof. Read, make your entry, please. And those are all in exclamation points. So let's see what it has to say. 23rd April, 1994. Marlena moved into our really newly painted room today. The women's quarters has just been has just been finished, and we are one of the first to move down here. It's great. We love it. And there's some other stuff here. Part always you here in this room. Harley Cavanaugh, Australia. All right, this might be disturbing. Warning, this room has a supernatural presence that draws you in, holds you captive. Strange things have occurred. You laugh in your sleep and go hypo at night. People have been seen crawling out of their door at night holding pillows with a mischievous grin. I think I'm going to go back and work in the swimming pool, but this will be revisited. Shot with the reflections and everything. Oh, that would slice your hand. Oh, like. God, it would slice you right open. Yeah. Like There's a slice small piece right on the bottom there. See it on the right there? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, look at that. Look at that little piece. We've already taken this particular piece and held this in and kept all this from leaking off. You just saw it up on top. But we want to kind of get behind this glass and see what we actually happen to do. And as you can see, this glass is in pieces. There we go. That is some thick glass. So it appears they had a seal back here. The glass went on, and then they had another seal out here to compress all that to keep from leaking. It also appears it didn't work that well, or just time. I'm gonna go with time. I bet it worked great when it was in. Looks like Okay, well, now we see what we have to replicate. As you can see, this light bulb was painted red. I don't think it came red, but somebody painted it red. I also noted it on the one opposing on this side over here, 
and the other two were white. So they wanted to give the pool a little bit of class. Let's get some color in it. I put on two coats, let it dry for a few minutes, and now I'm gonna take this masking tape off and press my fingers that it looks good. Not too bad. Tiny bit of bleeding, but I think it's pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. I love seeing the boats drive by. I love the interaction with the people. We get a lot of support. It makes me feel so good. So if you're on your boat, you're going by in the Delta, give us a wave. We always love it. If you'd like to give us some more support, um, bring us a, a snow cone or a slushie. <laughs> uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. Like our Facebook page. We also have a Patreon account where you can become a member. If you subscribe there, you get special benefits and it helps us. And as always, thank you for your support. Hey everybody, this is David Foster, Aurora Restoration Project crew member. Our friends at Smenko sent us some dive gear, and that means today we're gonna go down and check out the bottom of the Aurora. They sent us the S700 scuba tank and the compressor to go with it. So they sent us a really good quality two liter dive tank and the regulator and the pressure gauge and the compressor. So we're gonna fill this up. It may take about a half hour or so. We'll find out and then we're gonna go diving. So we got a fill hose here and we're just gonna hook it up really easy to the bottle or tank like so and then to the compressor. There we go. And we'll power it up and turn it on. There we go. Well, we already got some air in there and it takes about a half hour though and then we're ready to dive. about 20 minutes now and we're up to about 2300 pounds. All right. So we got our 3000 pounds in now and we're going to disconnect this and first we got to turn it off. It's still a little bit warm and it'll be warm for a while so the we're going to leave it power it up so if the fan keeps blowing and we gotta bleed this off a little bit get the air out of the lines so we can disconnect it safely and uh, turn this close it off and there you go next stop up on deck to go diving And it comes with this uh, pretty cool little backpack. Uh, so fits in there really good. And uh, we'll just snug it up securely. Yeah, it is a little breezy down here. So it might be challenging.
sit down for a second. Wow. Yeah, that looks like all of the gear from the Sea Hunt episodes. <laughs> hey, that's a good show. It's not that old. 1950s, right? Yeah. Like 1955, yeah. 56. Right. You got this stuff passed down from your grandpa or something? <laughs> I mean, no. Um, my dad got me my suit, or he gave me his, um, and, uh, I bought the fins, force fins, which I really love, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's been around, it's seen some use, but it still works. So we got some seed drops here, and, uh, so the mask won't fog up. These are probably 15 years old, so, uh. Well, let's hope it still works. I don't know if it expires or not. I'll let you know when I return from the diet. Hey, you can never go in the water without your trusty dive knife. It's not quite as big as my dad's old uh, aqua long 12 inch one, 12 inch blade, but uh, it's pretty cool, you know, it's a tool really, not a knife. Yeah, it's a pretty nice little cummerbund belt combination here. Feels pretty good. Strap right here. How's that look, Chris? You look like you're uh, you're ready to dive. Okay, it's working. Ah. Going into this dive, I didn't really have any idea what my buoyancy would be. I really was thinking I would sink very easily, and I didn't. Um, I didn't have my buoyancy compensator, and I didn't have my wetsuit or my weight belt. So I ended up going back to the surface and asking Chris for his weight belt. There wasn't a lot of time and the weight belt buckle was not working. So I just held it in one hand along with that flashlight. I saw these big holes in the rudder. They were obviously machined during the making of the rudder, but I just wondered what they were there for. There was a current, it was a little breezy, and it was pushing me around underwater. I couldn't seem to steady myself and stay in one position. The camera screen turned off, and I couldn't even see what I was actually filming. I was just hoping that the camera was still recording. I tried to keep the camera about 12 inches to 2 feet from the ship. Any further away 
because of the murky water, you really couldn't see hardly anything. But it worked out, and we did get some good footage. interesting part. I could see the edge of the prop where my hands had rubbed away the moss and there was still some shiny German steel under there. It was a little challenging to hold my position and clear my mask while holding the weight belt and the camera, but I got it done. Lots of moss, slime of some kind. It's just interesting being down there. I was constantly holding on to try to steady myself as the water pushed me away. The moss was slippery and with the current it was really hard to hold on to that prop. So much slime and moss, even little barnacles. I just wanted to start scraping it off right then. After checking the pressure gauge on the tank, I could see that it was pretty low. And time to return to the surface. It had been a good dive. Well, the uh, Smacko 700, S700 was pretty good. It worked. Um, was down there for probably 15 minutes and, uh, you know, did the job. We got some footage of the props and, uh, you know, barnacles, something, you know, stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's a good rig.